dolls! Welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be doing another DIY video as per requested. A while back I did a DIY home decor video with a bunch of super girly DIY projects for your room or house or whatever. And I did a poll on YouTube to see if you guys wanted to see me do a part two of this. And you definitely did, so I took a little while to come up with some new ideas for this video, but I think I have some really cute ones and I'm super excited to show you. So let's get right into the video. So first I'm going to go on Pinterest, of course, and pick out some inspiration. I love doing my own art and I would have for this video, but just for the sake of time and also these are very cute. I picked some out from Pinterest to print out. I had a little narrowing down process because I picked a bunch of them and I only wanted three. And so once I have my three favorites, I then crop them into five by sixes, which are what fit into my little frames. And then I sent them to Costco to print because it's only like 15 cents a photo. Once I got them back, this is what they look like. They are so beautiful and I got them in the luster, not glossy just because I think it looks better. And then I'm just going to put them in my frame and they fit perfectly. And then do that with all three frames. I believe these frames were just from Ikea. Um, they were super cheap. You could probably find anything like them on Amazon as well. But I just happened to already have these in my bathroom and just wanted to replace the photos in them. So now that I have them all put together, I just have this little space here where I'm going to hang them vertically in my bathroom. And don't they look so cute? And it was all for like, maybe $5. Alright, next we're going to do these super girly pillows. I bought everything I have here from Joanne Fabrics, and I got 14 by 14 pillow forms. First I'm going to start by cutting out my pink fur fabric. I'm going to add on 2 inches. Usually you allow about 1 inch for seam allowance, but I'm not great at making pillows, so I want to give myself 2 inches. So I'm cutting out 16 by 16. And I'm just making sure to make marks all the way across, so whenever I'm cutting across I don't cut it an angle or mess up the shape. Once I have my two pieces cut out, I'm going to place them outside facing in and pin them all together so I can sew around the edges. So starting with the back stitch so it doesn't come unraveled, I'm just going to start stitching all the way down the edge and I'm just using a straight stitch to put this together. And I'm just going to stitch around all the edges making sure I just leave a small section open where I can turn it all inside out again and put my pillow in. And now that that is all done, I'm going to turn it inside out, which is definitely the most fun part, and then stuff my pillow in through that same hole. So now that we have this opening here, I'm not going to install a zipper for this one. Uh, I am just going to hand sew it closed. And voila, you have a beautiful pink fur pillow. And I'm just going to put this white bow on it because it makes it super extra and girly. But I'm also going to make it so if I ever want to take off the bow, I can as well. So I took a little while perfecting my bow and making sure it was the most perfect, cute bow. And then once I found the perfect bow shape that I wanted, I'm just going to cut it and then sew it into place with how I like my bow. And there is the first super girly pillow done. Next we are going to be doing our Chanel quilted pillow. And same thing goes for this one with the extra seam allowance, um, but this fabric was, I'm telling you, way easier to cut because I was able to cut through the shapes and know I was cutting straight. And then I decided I wanted to install a zipper into this one, so what I did was lay my zipper out flat on the bottom side and mark where the top of the zipper is and the bottom. And then on the sewing machine, I am going to do my regular stitch up until that mark, and then I'm going to put it to the biggest stitch length possible to sew from there to the next mark, and then returning all the regular settings back again to sew after that mark. We will be ripping out the seams of the larger stitches later, so that is why they are there. 
Okay, so once you have that all done, lay your fabric out and try to iron the seam open as best you can. My fabric didn't really want to do it much, but if your fabric does, that is fabulous. And then I'm just remarking the marks to where I can see them and lay out the zipper. And then you are just going to pin your zipper in to the inside of your pillow, making sure that the zipper is facing in to the fabric. So I do not have a zipper foot that I'm using, but since the zipper was so flat, I was able to just use a regular sewing machine foot. And I'm just going to sew along the edge, making a rectangle around the zipper. Make sure you're sewing within the flaps of the fabric that you're sewing on, that way it is a closed seam. And once you reach one of the ends, just stick the needle into the fabric, lift the foot up, and then rotate. So now once that is all done, you are going to turn it over to see your work. As you can see, my rectangle is not perfect by all means, but this was my first time ever installing a zipper. And now you are going to take a seam ripper and rip out those big seams that you made before to reveal your zipper. Next, I'm going to trace out the Chanel logo onto my same fabric so I can emboss that onto the pillow. I'm just lightly tracing it in with this pencil here because I don't want it to show up on the fabric, but I also do need to see it. And then I'm just going to cut out around the edges, leaving a little bit of extra space around where I traced out. Now at the sewing machine, I'm going to just be sewing along all of the edges where I can see my pencil mark, trying to stay as true to the shape that I traced out as possible. I definitely had to take this step super slow and always check under the foot. I kind of wish I had a smaller foot for this, but I just worked with what I got. So once that is all done, I just kind of went in and cut out the kind of fluff layer in between the fabric that was already there just to kind of help it lay a little bit more flat. And then I ironed it through a pillowcase because I wanted to be very careful with it not to burn the edges. And now that the zipper was installed and I got my Chanel logo in, I am going to sew all around all the rest of the edges. And then I'm going to flip it inside out through the zipper hole, poking out all the edges so it is nice and square. And then I am going to stuff my pillow in. I was super happy with the way this one turned out, zipper and embossing and all. Let me know which of the two pillows was your guys' favorite. So next is the pink fur tissue box cover. I got this metal tissue box cover from Goodwill for about $2 because it was all scribbled on. But it was a super nice shape and I was covering it anyways with this super gorgeous pink fur fabric. I got this fabric from eBay. This is my favorite color of all. And I believe it's only like $10 for a whole yard of this. So I'm just going to kind of drape it over the top of the tissue box and I'm just going to cut out around it just to make sure the whole thing will be covered when I glue it on. And then I'm just going to start gluing it at the top first and then I will move on to gluing it down the sides. Just making sure the whole thing is all covered. And another reason why I just draped it over was because it has that odd shape at the bottom so I just glued that on too. Now that everything is glued down to all the edges, I'm just going to cut off the excess fabric with my scissors and then just kind of keep trimming it down and refining the edges more and more until it blends in all the way. Once I got all the edges trimmed, then I opened up the top of the tissue box cover here and just kind of cut it into multiple flaps. That way I can glue it down on the other side. So now I'm just going to flip it over and glue down all the little triangles onto the inside so it has a nice finished look on the top. And trim off the excess and glue down the insides of the bottom. And that is it. Now I have a super extra girly tissue box cover. So I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Let me know which one of the DIYs was your guys' favorite. Also let me know if you have any other video suggestions down in the comments. And if you haven't already, I would love if you would subscribe to my channel and give me a thumbs up. Love you guys so much, and I will see you next time.